All right, guys, take three. I've been trying to get him calmed down enough to be able to even do this video. He's crashed going in and out. And Parker, I just had to really tell him to knock it off, Mandy, and he will go laying down. That's the end of the sequence. That's what I want you to understand. If, if, the, if it comes to that, if he's in his crate and barking, doing that aggressive barking, and if he said, well, how do I know if it's aggressive barking, record it and put it in slow motion and play it for people and say, what does this sound like? And if they say a rabbit hyena, you'll know it's aggressive. Anyway, let me get on uh, Explorer here because i got to do my video about Mark because I told him I would do that. So. Where am I here? I wanted to do... Okay, here we are. All right, let me get... All right, guys, we're back with, I finally got Parker calmed down enough to be able to do the video. <laughs> I hope you're watching, Mandy, because there's a sequence to his throwing a little tantrum thing, and it ends with him laying down. You can, you can win, and he'll go to the back of the crate and lay down. I'm going to show you how to do that, but there's really no other choice. And if you said, well, how can we tell if he's barking aggressively, uh, record it and put it in slow motion, play it in slow motion, and then play it for other people. Don't tell them it's a dog. And say, what does this sound like to you? When they say it's like, it sounds like a hyena or something, you know, you'll know. Anyway, guys, I want to talk about my friend Mark, and Mark needs a little boost to get going. Hello, Alexander. Was that the dog that I was getting, Rocky? If that's the one I'm getting, let me know. Put in the comments or something. I liked him. I couldn't really see that good. These glasses aren't that good. Uh, but if that's the one I'm getting, then just let me know. And remember, I have to get it shipped to Orlando Airport. I don't even like to drive to that airport, Alexander. It's very dangerous. I can maybe even get a pet transport to deliver them. Uh, you know the kinds I need, though. The kind just like Eli that's just, these Americans can't handle, you know, these. they all go get these sable, uh, you know, dogs that aren't really very attractive and stuff that they can't handle. And then next thing, the thing is killing everybody in their neighborhood. I like big, flashy red dogs like you have. Anyway, guys, I want to talk about Mark. And I'm, I hope you're there, Mark, because I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of this guy and, and to help you understand the profoundness of this guy. And I'm just going to tell you why. Mark can never get me out of his life. Because if there's somebody in your life that understands the profoundness of you, you do everything you can to keep that person in your life, not get rid of them. And honestly, you've got to be operating at a fairly advanced level in dog training to be able to even understand this guy. So if you said how many people are there that can understand him, probably like 300, if that. So he's trained and certified 53 bomb dogs. I didn't know about that part. Only person in history to compete in AKC Retriever Nationals and the Schutzen Nationals. That right there is the most profound thing, because if you said, what's the difference between those sports? Um, a lot of money and a lot of distance. And, and if you said, what do you mean distance? The, the, they're operating in field trials dogs at hundreds of yards away from the handler. Hundreds of yards away from the handler. That's the difference, you know. And they're on different training grounds all the time, you know. And it's a professional sport. And if you said, well, what does that mean? It means money changes everything. Money changes everything. Schutzen's not a professional sport. I mean, it is maybe on some level, but if you said there's, you know, these people are shoots and pros, the equivalent of these field trial guys, they're not because it's just a completely different sport. He's titled 126 dogs in different sports, AKC field trials, hunt test, shoots and, and UKC confirmation. I don't know what kind of dogs were those, Mark. Was that those bulldogs? He's seen everything. He originally started out living Alaska training sled dogs. This guy's tough, I'm telling you. He doesn't let anybody bully me. He doesn't let any dog trainers bully me. Uh, he's trained and handled Rottweiler to a Schutzen one, and both dogs were, oh, two, oh, three Rottweilers to a Schutzen one. I don't even remember he had Rottweilers. I'm learning a lot today. Uh, and he was highest scoring dog at the trial. Trained and handled the most accomplished German Shepherd female in American history. See, I forgot about all this part. Uh, Erica Zamat, 
12 times Schutz and three also had the tracking title FH completed in eight competed in eight nationals and four regional events. This guy's unreal. I'm sending this guy a gift basket just for being my friend for 20 years. You don't even know the hysteria I put up with <laughs> that he puts up with from me and uh, trained and handled two American bulldogs in powerhouses, silver tip call name. Oh, Handled, oh, handled number two American Bulldog in America. I think we should leave that one off, Mark. Uh, he's ready to kill me right now. Uh, was a confirmation champion. Oh, and I was also a Schutz and one. Yeah, that is impressive, Mark. Yeah, he can do anything. He's, he's very, he's a Jedi, you know. He's the one that gave me my Jedi certificate. Yeah, that's where you get them, from this guy. <laughs> I just got the little tiny junior one. I'm not, you know, that's all I care about. So what I want you guys to understand is if you're a dog trainer, you need to understand how people from every discipline, if you said, you know, anybody could come to America, Europeans are going to come to America. They're going to set up a kennel. They're going to get labs and they're going to blow these Americans away. They're going to proceed to come here and take over the American field trial system, garner gazillions of dollars in revenue. That's just honestly unbelievable because if you said what is the most prolific stud dog uh, in history, and I would say, and Mark will probably agree with me, a dog named Evan Starlene Mack, and they all go back to him by now. If you said there's a, if you said the last five years, 99% of the field champions carry that dog. Say, oh, I believe that. I believe that. So there's a difference between it's, it's just, you can make it as a pro in that sport. And if you just said, I'm going to make it as a Schutzen pro, it's really hard to do because it just doesn't pay the bills. Whereas a field trial pro, it does pay the bills. And so a lot of people want to get their bills paid. So they're very, very motivated to do it. If you said no, shouldn't you know? A lot of people should. Some people just do it as a hobby, or you know, or just train one dog. I'd say that's my experience. So anyway, I learned a lot about Mark today. I didn't realize that he. Uh, hello, Alice. Anyway, Alice, my friend Mark is the most amazing trainee ever. And if you said why would that why would that make him great? I mean, if you said a field trial guy could take a Malinois and win the um, European nationals next year. It's, I don't see that happening. It's the theory is so different. And if you said a Malinois guy is going to come to America because the bloodstock is here, we're just oozing at the things with these field trial bloodstock. If you set up money is no object, I'd say here, grab a uh, uh, issue of the trial news. We'll get your kennel started real quick, you know, by buying, you know, dogs off of these prolific studs that are known to produce. And this guy's going to get these field trial dogs and he's going to win the nationals. And these American trainers are going to be embarrassed because that's not going to happen. And if you said, why? Because of the collective knowledge that they have there and there, it doesn't mean there's no me middle meeting. Mark always gets mad because field trial people's obedience looks horrible. And field trial people don't understand why you would want a dog all up on you like that. It needs to go over there 500 yards. You know, we don't want it all up on us like that. To them, that looks very strange. You know, if you've never seen that kind of healing and stuff before, they don't understand any of that because they're all, you know, they're using it as a guided missile. It's not all up on them. Not looking them at all. It's looking where they're looking. So anyway, hello, Suzanne. How is everything going? How's the puppy doing? If it's time to get a new one soon, please let me know, girl. Anyway, you guys, I think that, you know, the uh, the moral of this story is, though, is you've, you know, if you're a dog trainer, you've, you've always got to know dog trainers that are better than you. If you're the best dog trainer you know, that's not good. I think that's what's wrong with that. I finally got kicked off the fake dog trainer board. I thought I got kicked off like six months ago. That's the surprising part. That's why it's not upsetting. I thought I was already kicked off. Uh, there's some goofus that makes these videos saying these people are terrible trainers, which they are. Uh, so now they're going to try to get the FBI involved. This kid is like some 20-year-old kid that makes these goofy videos. 
I said, oh, please, the FBI has better things to do. Okay, let's pull them off some Afghani terrorists because some punk, you know, in his mother's basement is calling you a terrible traitor when you are. Let's get the FBI on this. <laughs> so I went on there and said, oh, please, you know, get out there and produce some animated work. And then I guess, I don't know if you saw that, Mike, but I was kicked off. I was already posted on there like five times as a troll. That's why I don't understand. It's their fault for letting me stay on there. It's their fault it happened. I place the blame on everybody else. Anyway, you guys, that's the moral of the story. And all of you guys that believe in me, it does. It means everything to me. But I say all the time, if nobody but Mark believed, because I wonder, I wonder, people don't seem to notice and they don't seem to understand the pager as much as I explain it. I just start feeling hopeless. You know, and then and then when you show them the pager, they go, oh, yeah, oh, okay, I see. It's like your cell phone. It's, oh, my God, I've been saying that for weeks. So you just realize they don't listen. Anyway, you guys, I've got to load up the dogs. I'm getting ready to go. Big field, big recall, because you've got to switch your training up. If one day you just did... Nothing but recalls. Not I'm first. I'm going to work on my healing. Then I'm going to work on my downing. Then I'm going to work. No. Take a bunch of little pieces and put them together. If you ever, I want you to think of it the way they shoot a movie. Because I didn't really understand it either. You guys know I had the puppies in the movie Marley and Me. I didn't understand any of it. You know, I understand a lot more now after being there. But everything's fragmented, and they put it together later. And it all comes into a cohesive story. So that's what you guys have to think of. Today, I'm shooting the chase scene. You know, where they're chasing me down, you know. So that's what I want you guys to think of. I'm not going to get out there. I'm going to start healing. I'm going to start jerking a chain. I'm going to start making them obey and start making them understand. You better listen to me. It's so painful. It's so painful. You know, if you're going to have a... And that's what I think I didn't understand before. If you're going to have a long-term relationship with the dog... The second you let a dog see that all it takes is them bumping up to you, Talbot tries to do it. He tries to ram into me. I, I don't like it at all, especially when carrying something. I say, please, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Just, you know, slam into you and stuff. Well, you're trying to walk along. You know, so if you're, you, you've got to set... I don't know, I'm just... I honestly, I'm not going to say it because it's like, oh my God, that's all this woman talks about. But, you know, if you... You know, Carla, if you're watching, you know, kind of like the way Jeff just kept petting Shoe Bottom. The problem is if he took Shoe Bottom up out somewhere, Shoe Bottom wouldn't look to him for any advice. That's the problem. Once you do that, they kind of categorize you. Anyway, guys, I'm grabbing the phone. I'm running to my insurance agent. Who knows? I might be live from my insurance agent office. She can tell you more about me. <laughs> anyway, I'll be right back. Bye, guys. Alright guys, I'll be back. <laughs>